What is up, y'all? This is Andy with Poster Grind, your neighborhood art director that designs movie posters for a living. Today, I'm excited to share with you this really cool graffiti stenciled technique that you can apply to your typography and or logos. We're going to be messing around with some dissolve, some Gaussian blur, some layer styles, all sorts of fun things. So without further ado, let's dive on in. <laughs> What? All right, y'all, the template I'm using today is going to be 20 inches wide, 13 and a half inches high, and a resolution of 300. The reason I'm using such a high resolution is because it makes the overspray of the spray paint look a lot better than in, than using a lower resolution. Now, before we get started, you're probably gonna wanna pick up some textures. I picked up this concrete texture as well as these spray paint PNGs that you can see here from Envato.com, which happens to be an awesome website where you can pick up textures and other fun creative things for a very low sum of around 16 bucks a month or 200 for the year. I'll put the exact names of these files down below in the description so you can follow along. And I'm only gonna ask that you use our affiliate link if you can, thanks. All right, go to new layer, hit T on your keyboard and type out whatever you wanna type out for your logo. I'm using grind, then I'm gonna hit command T and size it up a little bit. If you're curious, I'm using CC Biff Bam Boom type, which is in the Adobe collection. From here, I want it to look more like a stencil, so I wanna have a little cut in here on the R and on the D as well. So we're just going to use the rectangle tool, and I'm gonna make sure the fill is set to white, and then I'm just gonna make a little rectangle right here, tilt it a little bit, hit Command J to make a copy, and drag another one over here, hitting Command T to change the direction. From here, we're gonna create a brand new smart object layer. So I'm gonna hit new layer. Then I'm gonna to go to select, select color range, using the eyedropper, making sure that I'm selected on the darkest dark. Then I'm gonna hit okay. Now we're gonna to go to our adjustment layer, solid color, making sure that it's on black, hit okay. And from here, we can turn this into its own smart object by right clicking, convert to smart object. Now to stay somewhat organized, those bottom layers we just used to create that logo, we're going to select all, holding my finger on the shift button. Then I'm gonna hit Command G to make its own little group and just name that type and drag this down below our background layer. Now, as you can see, this logo is ready to be distorted and turned into a stencil. The first thing we're gonna wanna do is change the blending mode to dissolve. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is go to filter, blur gallery, field blur, and then in field blur, as you can see, it's already kind of getting our edges nice and oversprayed with, with spray paint, but we're gonna take it a step further by hitting Command H, and that's going to bring up our panel of our, of our adjusters. And you can turn these and make them stronger and less strong in certain parts of your logo. So I wanna have a little bit more overspray in certain parts and less in others. So I'm just gonna put these all over until I have something looking more like a stencil. And once you're happy with your results, hit OK. I'm gonna hit Command H again and get rid of my grid. Now what we wanna do is distort it even further by adding a layer mask. So I'm going to the Japanese flag, adding a mask, then I'm just gonna start painting with my brush by hitting B. I'm just going to kind of add certain areas of spray to make it look a little more realistic. As soon as you're happy with your results, we're gonna do another new layer. We're gonna go up to select, color range, 
and then making sure that we are selected on the darkest dark with our eyedropper, we're gonna hit OK and do the same exact thing one more time by going to our solid color adjustment layer, making sure it's on black, hitting OK, right clicking, convert to smart object. Then we're gonna take that layer that we just used to make that smart object and drop that down below our bottom layer. Now from here, we wanna add a little bit more blur so that it makes it even more realistic. So I'm gonna go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and it's just gonna be a subtle blur of probably less than one pixel. We'll do 0.8. And then if you zoom in, you can kinda of see how that blur makes that dissolve a little bit more soft and more realistic like spray paint. Now, if you guys have learned anything up until this point, please hit that like button now. I really appreciate it. The icing on the cake and to make this look even better is to use our PNG spray paint spray that we picked up over at Envato. So what I'm gonna do now is just basically spread these PNGs throughout the logo and using some masking and uh, resizing to get this to look even better. All right, one of our final steps to lock this whole thing up is to create a new layer. And now we're going to take a snapshot of everything below by hitting Shift, Option, Command, E. Now what we can do is go up to Select, Select Color Range, and we're gonna hit White with our fuzziness at 200, hit OK, and then we're gonna hit our Mask icon to mask this out, but we need to invert the mask at this point. So go ahead and hit Command I, invert that mask, then right click, convert to smart object. And once again, we can get rid of these bottom two layers and put them below our background layer. And by doing that, we've deleted the background and have a logo to work with. What I'm gonna do now is go ahead and unhide that concrete texture I had waiting for us. I'm gonna go back up to our logo. I'm gonna double click to bring up our layer styles and then in layer styles, holding down option, I'm gonna drag our white slider to the left so that it starts to blend in with that background. And I can do the same thing with our darks and slide that to the right. And there you go, guys. That's how you do a stencil in Photoshop. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks for watching.